Ladies, gentlemen, and destined ones of all ages, there are plenty of fun ways to engage with this game and sort of make the most of what it has to offer. Personally, I love the sheer concept of just build creation in games like this with at least reasonably in-depth systems, allowing for fun synergies or combinations that just sort of increase your potency exponentially if you get the right combination. And now that we are firmly far enough into the life cycle of Black Myth Wukong that recommending a build for new game plus playthroughs doesn't feel weird, it's finally time to talk about how to get what is quite possible the objectively strongest build in the game, for the specific reason that it hits the highest possible damage numbers, able to essentially one-shot bosses with high frequency, even in new game plus scaling and further playthroughs than that even. And the main thing that enables this is a combination of one of the earliest things you get access to in the game, and one of the latest. The early one being the Pilgrim armor set. This is a few things, but the big main one is that it gives you a growing, stacking damage boost while you are sprinting that lasts for a short duration after you stop sprinting. Due to the short window, this only really applies to two things. The light attack gap closer while sprinting, which is fine, but much more buildable, is the smash stance charged heavy attack, as smash stance lets you charge heavies while sprinting. And then you can unleash them as your momentum stopping attack, which will gain the full attack bonus, which is up to a 100% damage bonus if you sprint long enough. We combine this with a bunch of different things like the ability to charge to four focus points while standing in ring of fire, the various ways that you can boost cloud step and unveiling strike to release it, to boost a Singular hits damage, which you can do with charged heavies while sprinting. And then the big combo for this as well is the A Pluck of Many spell with the Freed Mind Relic that you get at the start of New Game Plus for getting the secret ending. And this relic has an option that makes all duplicates copy your strongest attacks. This includes four focus point charged heavies while sprinting. So you can go full heavy tilt into this, just lean into it completely, like the same concept as an early game sprint cloud step setup, but with way more options at your disposal and the extra damage pop from the duplicates copying your four focus point heavy moves as well just makes it overtake the damage bonus that a spellbinder version of a sprint armor build would normally serve for in this type of setup before you reach the new game plus relic. It's honestly hard to show just how insane this setup can be by just looking at boss health bars because the actual setup that creates all of the boost does enough damage that the pluck of many duplicates will beat the crap out of most bosses before the heavy attack even gets to go off, which is pretty funny in itself, honestly. All that said, let's talk about the equipment and how to get it, the skill tree and relic choice and then just how to play in a bit more detail. Starting off then, we have the weapons, and the most ideal one for this in the game is of course the Dark Iron Staff, which is the best for most anything once you have actually unlocked it. This looks at your defense number and boosts your attack considerably, depending on how high your defense is. The only reason that you wouldn't want this staff, honestly, is if you don't have it yet because it's just sort of that good, especially because at the point that you'd be using it, any armor set you'd be wearing is mythical, which means it would be at really high defense. And to make this staff, you do need to get to the end of chapter five secret area in your second cycle. So new game plus chapter five secret area, which is most of the way through your second playthrough. Before this though, the best option for the most part is the Jingu Bang staff, which you get as part of the story before completing chapter six. This weapon has great stats as well, but also the unique effect of letting you build up to four focus points without your meter decreasing. The main effect of this has is just letting us build to actual four focus faster as our focus generation won't be fighting a permanently draining meter as it normally does does, so it just helps it a little bit in that way, as well for the combat in between your spells. Then for our vessel, we of course have the Weaver's Needle for the bonus to crit chance and crit damage from the passive equip effect. For the spirit, we use the Gore Eye Taoist. This one is just incredibly strong and importantly affects both us and our monkey duplicates as the staff that you stick in the ground affects any allies that are standing in the radius. So it's a really nice sort of doubling up damage there. This comes from the optional boss of the same name near the end of chapter two. It also gives you up to 15 bonus maximum mana as a passive equip effect, which isn't bad at all either. Then we have our armor set for this, and this is just full pilgrim armor. This is the first craftable set after you reach the second shrine of the game back in chapter one, and the helmet lets you use your gourd while sprinting, which is nice. The two set bonus for the armor increases sprint speed, and the four set bonus is the attack increase that we talked about earlier, which stacks up to a 100% damage increase at maximum potency. So it's a really, really massive bump to your damage if you know how to use it. This also though has a special bonus mythical set effect if you upgrade all of the armor pieces. So if you upgrade every piece to mythical rarity and wear it in every slot, it will gain a bonus effect when all of them are equipped together. And for this one, it is focus gained while sprinting just passively, meaning you can just run in a circle for a few seconds and gain some permanent focus. Not even like heavy charging focus speed increase, no, just full proper focus while running that sticks around even after you stop. So you can actually engage with this focus before you even enter combat, which makes it very, very useful, especially because you can have this before any 
an actual meaningful boss fight, you just run in circles until you have three focus points before you actually walk into the room, or even four focus points if you're using the Jingu Bang weapon variation. Then past that we have our curios for the main build setup, and here we use the Amber Prayer Beads, which come from the cave on the main path after the Father of Stones boss in Chapter 5. These increase your focus generation speed just in general, which while not adding to the potency of the singular hit, does make it much quicker to actually generate, which just makes it much more comfortable as a way of playing the build. Then we have the Auspicious Lantern Curio. This is the reward for killing all of the Lantern Gwai enemies in the Pagoda Wheel area of Chapter 3 before defeating the boss at the top of this area. It's pretty missable, but it's quite strong as a Curio, especially in this setup, giving you the Chance Beguiled effect when entering Cloud Step, which increases your attack a fair bit at the cost of lowering your maximum health, but this factors into our massive hits as well. If you don't have this, you can instead use a copy of either of our other two talismans, the Cat Eye Beads from the Wandering White optional boss in Chapter 1, and this is just a straight up 3% crit chance uh, increase. Quite a simple but effective use for a single curio slot. And then the Beast Buddha Curio for 9% crit damage, which is a pretty high bonus for a single curio slot, and they come as a farmable RNG drop from the Beast Monk enemies, the easiest one of these to farm directly beside the Towers of Karma Shrine in Chapter 3. Because these are RNG as well, you can actually get a bunch of them in a single playthrough if you just keep farming for them, and technically the highest damage singular hit version of this build would actually just use four of these, or I guess five of them if you have all five curio slots that you can eventually get, but then you would be lacking a fair bit of utility and of course be working with low crit chance, but really, really high potential crit damage if it does proc. After that then, finally for equipment we have our Gourd setup. The Immortal Blessing Gourd itself gives you an attack boost after you drink from it, but lowers your health regained on use. This is purchased from the Shen Monkey NPC after the optional Frog Boss that you complete in Chapter 4. Then inside of this Gourd we have the Long Bomb Drink from the main path of Chapter 5 behind the Yin Yang Fish Boss Fight, and this gives you a significant damage boost to the next attack that you do after drinking from your Gourd, which of course works great within our setup. Then we also have the Breath of Fire soak within this, which comes from the Cyan and long optional long boss fight in chapter three, and this increases the damage of your next unveiling strike after you drink from the gourd. And then we also have the tiger relic soak for an increase to crit chance after drinking to help with the big hit frequency. Then our last two slots we work together, sort of the death stinger soak from the scorpion prince spirit enemy near the verdure bridge shrine in chapter four, and the double combed rooster blood from the final boss of the chapter four secret area. The first of these inflicts poison on us manually when we drink from the gourd, and the second one clears the poison status from us and gives you a movement speed buff and a crit chance buff as well when you clear poison by drinking your gourd with the soak. And using these two things together, poisons and instantly clears it, just give you the bonus buffs from the second one for free. So basically, we're using two slots for a bit of crit chance and some movement speed because there isn't really any more damage that we can pull out of the gourd slots here. Then moving on, now we have our relics and our skill tree, which is relatively straightforward. Starting with the relics, we take crit damage boosts highest priority in the first category. Cloud step cooldown reduction is okay, but pretty much everything will die before you get to your second cloud step even with this in this setup. With the second relic highest priority is the attack increase after perfect dodge, just in case we happen to get this and it overlaps with our big hit, then varied combo iframe increase just because you might as well because we aren't using rock solid at all. Third relic, Big, big priority is in one breath, which lets us charge up to four focus points in heavies while standing inside of the Ring of Fire spell, which is part of our big main singular hit combo. And then Lingering Aroma gives us a damage boost after casting, which also factors that in. Then the next two relics are personal choice with the final secret new game plus relic, of course being the duplicates copy big attacks as the main sort of hinging factor of the build too. Then we of course also have the skill tree and here we fully fill out a pluck of many, which increases the duration and amount of duplicates as well as the damage that they do, and also makes them able to cast Ring of Fire for us, which adds more zones we can use to charge the big heavy attack while sprinting too, which is great. We also of course fully fill out the Cloud Step section of the skill tree. This is what allows us to charge heavy attacks while in stealth to release as the Unveiling Strike, and it also both gives us stacking crit chance the longer we are in stealth, but also generally increases the Unveiling Strike damage as a secondary bonus too. Then for Ring of Fire, you mostly want the three upgrades on the left side here for most of your general use. This will give you increased duration, focus gain, and health regen, which all are quite good for this, but then the other upgrades for Ring of Fire are pretty solid too if you have the extra points if you expect a more prolonged fight for whatever reason. In Staff Stances, the really important upgrades though are the left side down Smash Stance. This allows you to charge your heavy attacks while sprinting to combo with the armor set, and this also gives you bonus damage and damage reduction for your Smash Stance heavy attacks. And the final upgrade is optional for this, but it gives you a bit of utility if you need to dodge while charging up to potentially keep the focus build up if you time it right. Aside 
aside from that, make sure to pick up the heavy bonus damage uh, node over here and bonus charge speed options on the left of the area too. Then moving on to foundation, pretty much everything here is optional, nothing is required for this combination, but I pretty much always recommend this setup in the stamina tree just to make stamina management and dodging in general just way more comfortable and potent. And the left side of martial arts as an actual section is all centered around your light attack combo. We don't really need this for the way that we're going to be playing, but it never hurts to have this just in case because light attacks are great for general mob clearing. You don't necessarily want to be running around charging sprint attacks just for the parts of levels in between bosses. Then there is of course also the survival side of this section for pure stat bonuses. And the properly important ones here are crit chance and crit damage. I would say crit chance is actually more important than crit damage for this, just because you will have naturally low crit chance and more frequent crits makes it much more potent. Of course, attack is also good as is max mana for more spell casting if you really need it and everything else is just pure bonuses here. That just about does it for all of your equipment and skill choices too. So let's just quickly go over the sort of order of operations to get that singular big hit. You want to start the fight by using the spirit skill to stick the staff down in the ground. Cast a pluck of many as a spell to some of the duplicates, cast ring of fire, cast cloud step, drink from your gourd, charge up in ring of fire, and then start sprinting around when reaching full charge and release the heavy attack at full stacks for the biggest possible hit, which should also be copied by the monkey duplicates for just an unbelievably large singular pop of damage on any boss or enemy in the game. If the enemy survives for whatever reason, all of these things and this combo is repeatable with all of your cooldown timers, and even without the cloud step and pluck of many and ring of fire, you still have an incredibly strong weapon and armor combo that you can just use to sprint around using charged heavy attacks anyways in between. That just about does it for today then everyone, the sprint of many four point heavy duplicating build in Black Myth Wukong, capable of hitting some of the highest numbers in the entire game pretty easily, and to a point that bosses just become completely trivial as long as you learn to properly engage in the order of events that I've laid out here. I hope you've all enjoyed this, and let us know what other styles of build you would want to see for the game in the future in the comments down below. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye